Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about the red flags you missed when you were with the narcissist. A lot of times you don't realize you're dealing with a narcissist till you get out of the relationship. So I always tell people there had to have been red flags. And a lot of people were blindsided when the narcissist discarded them or when the relationship all of a sudden crumbled and the narcissist walked out or you had to do a reverse discard and you're sitting there thinking that everything was okay, like what the hell just happened here? But there were red flags. There's always red flags. Either you didn't recognize the red flags or you ignored the red flags. So I made a list up of things that you may have missed in your relationship with the narcissist that you should have taken more seriously that maybe you didn't think was a big deal or maybe you gave the narcissist the benefit of the doubt or maybe you didn't realize what the narcissist was doing. So let me dive right in here and talk about the red flags you missed when you were with the narcissist. And the reason that this is so important is so that when you go into another relationship, if you see any of these red flags, you've got to say to yourself, uh, 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 I see a red flag here. I can't get in too deep. I've got to really analyze and watch this person because this person might not be authentic. They might be shady. They could be a narcissist. They could be a liar. So let me go through the list of red flags you may have missed in your past relationship with the narcissist. Number one, you guys, and this is a big, big red flag. The narcissist is always disappearing. That is the huge, the biggest red flag in a relationship with a covert narcissist. Covert narcissists disappear all the time and they ghost all the time. Why is that? Because they don't tell you, you know, what they're doing they are very secretive, they're very sneaky, they're very shady, okay? So a covert narcissist will disappear from time to time. In other words, you call their phone, they're not picking up their phone all night, and they tell you, oh, they went to sleep, or their phone was downstairs, or you know, their phone battery died. There's always excuses with a covert narcissist. So when you see that a lot, that you can't get in touch with this person or they're disappearing a lot, that is a huge red flag, huge red flag, you guys. You're probably dealing with a covert narcissist. Another red flag you may have missed when you were with the narcissist is that when you ask the narcissist a question, they never answered you directly, okay? They don't do that because they don't want to take accountability or they have something to hide. When somebody can't answer a question directly, automatically something should, you know, go off in your brain and say they have something to hide. And this is why they gaslight. They're trying to confuse you. They're trying to confuse you because they have something to hide or they're about to lie to you. Okay. And also if they hesitate too, when somebody hesitates, when you ask them a question, that usually could be a sign too that they're about to lie to you. Not always, but you have to look at all factors to really evaluate whether you're dealing with someone who's about to lie to you. But one of the red flags with a covert narcissist, you know, that you may have missed is that they never were able to answer a question directly. They always gaslit you or they called you crazy or they attacked your character and said you were insecure, you have issues, you have trust issues. Instead of answering the question, they're saying all these other things, okay? They're deflecting. So covert narcissists deflect all the time, all right? Another sign, red flag, that you may have missed when you were with the covert narcissist is the need for constant control. They need to control everything. They control things in the house, how things are cleaned, how things are cooked, who drives the car. They have a constant need for control. You know, how you fold laundry or, you know, they're just, they're very, very hypercritical. They'll always tell you how you need to do something or they'll correct you. 
So if you find that, you know, they can't just let things go and they've always got to be the authority on something, you may be dealing with a controlling person who could be a narcissist. And that's a red flag, you guys. All right, I'm moving on on the list here, okay? Another big, 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 big red flag you could have missed when you were with the covert narcissist is the excuses. Covert narcissists are famous for giving you excuses. This is, my friends, a big red flag that you're probably dealing with a covert narcissist because they make promises that they don't keep. They're not consistent. So they'll say, oh yeah, no, definitely we'll get together, you know, this weekend. And then there's an excuse. And then there's an excuse every weekend why they can't get together with you. There's an excuse why they can't progress in the relationship. There's an excuse why they didn't call you, okay? But you see it consistently. And, you know, you got to be able to differentiate whether, you know, it's, it's authentic, that things, things do happen, or if, it, if you're starting to see a pattern of excuses, okay? So that could be a red flag. And they love to use excuses when they're juggling other supply. They'll always have to have an excuse why they disappear, or why they can't call you, or why they can't see you. So you're going to get a lot of excuses. These are all red flags. Now, another red flag when you're dealing with a covert narcissist is that they're very cold people. They could be cold, they could be unaffectionate, and they control people with coldness. Covert narcissists control people with coldness and the silent treatment. So one of the red flags that you may have missed was that, you know, they're not affectionate to you. So they want you thirsty to always show them affection. They want you begging. Covert narcissists want you begging for their attention and their affection. So they hold back a little bit. And then they, again, what do we get? We get excuses. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, you know, I I need to go to bed. Oh, I have to work. There's always excuses why they can't be close, why they can't be affectionate, all right? When you're dealing with a covert narcissist, huge red flag, you guys, is that you never really know how they feel about you, okay? Huge red flag. You're always trying to figure out, does this person love me or do they not love me? They say one thing and they do another. They tell you how much they care about you, but they don't show you that they care about you. They may show you once or twice and you hang on those good times that you had with them once or twice. And then the other 80% of the time, they're cold, distant, aloof. Okay. And you're saying to yourself, well, you know, this isn't the normal behavior of somebody that really cares about somebody, someone or cares about me. Wouldn't they want to be close with you? And the answer to that is absolutely. When somebody really loves you and cares about you, they want to be around you. They will not make excuses to not see you. They will not make excuses not to be near you. They want to be close with you. When you care about somebody or you love somebody, You want to be around that person. You want to feel that closeness with them. But see, covert narcissists, you give you excuses. Why? Or what they'll do is they'll give you an excuse like, you know, it's not you. It's me. It's from my childhood trauma. You know, I, I, I still have issues with this or I still have issues with that. That could be a huge excuse so that they don't have to get close with you. Because here's the thing, here's another big red flag, you guys. When you deal with a covert narcissist, you will feel like there's always a wall between you. You can never connect with these people's soul, okay? And why is that? Because they don't wanna get too close to you, they don't wanna set themselves up and be vulnerable because they're afraid of getting hurt. This is what it's really all about. So if you felt that distance, you felt that coldness, that is a red flag. You've got to trust your gut. You've got to trust your instincts. And if it doesn't feel right, guess what? It's not right, okay? Now, moving along for red flags you missed with the covert narcissist, all right? Another one is that they don't listen. A lot A lot of times with a covert narcissist, they turn their head when you're talking and they don't validate you. They don't want to acknowledge what you're saying. So they make like they're not listening or they turn their head 
or they change the topic, okay? Why? Because they don't want to give you any credit for anything that you're saying They because that gives you power, right? So they don't want to give you power. What they want to do is create doubt within you, doubt in what you're saying, doubt in what you're doing, and how they do that is by showing you no reaction, okay? They're not like the overt narcissist or the grandiose narcissist that will disagree with you and tell you you're wrong, you're this, you're that. Instead, they sit there like a stone and they stare right through you and they say nothing. That, my friends, is a red flag. There's a reason that that person is running silent on you, okay? And again, another, another red flag you may have missed with the covert narcissist is that they love the silent treatment. This, this is you guys, this is how they, they, they fight is by the silent treatment. So if you say, or you do anything that they don't like, boom, they run silent on you, but they don't tell you what's bothering them. Okay. Covert narcissists don't tell you what's bothering them. Instead, they pay you back behind your back, or they pay you back by being passive aggressive. Maybe they show up late. Maybe they, you know, have a face on at a party. Maybe they slam doors. Maybe they're cold to your family. This is how they pay you back because they're mad at you. They don't communicate directly. All right. And that's a sure sign that you're dealing with a covert narcissist is that they don't communicate directly. All right. Going through the red flags. So if you saw any of these red flags, you know, when you were with the covert narcissist, you wouldn't know that unless you know about covert narcissism, all right? So you have to forgive yourself. You had no way of knowing this. But in the future, when you get into another relationship and you, you're seeing these kinds of signs, you got to say, oh, 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 I may be dealing with a covert narcissist here. I, I got to watch, watch this person, all right? Another thing... Another red flag that you may have missed with the narcissist is that um, that you didn't look into their background, okay? Always look into a person's background that you intend on having a serious relationship with, okay? You want to see where this person comes from. You want to look at their home environment. What was their relationship to their parents? Were they shown love? Were they overvalidated by their parents where they were like the golden child or the spoiled child or the entitled child that always got their way? Okay, so now they're entitled. Or were they undervalidated where their parents put them down, criticized, judged them, and never made them feel like they were good enough? Okay, if they came from a kind of background like that and, you know, they're always going to be trying to get that validation from those toxic parents. That's why narcissists, you know, the people they value the most is their family, especially if they came from kind of, they were undervalidated as a child. They're always trying to please those parents and get their validation. So, you know, they'll choose their family over you because they always want to get that validation from them. Okay. So these are all the red flags you may have missed with somebody. Like I was coaching a woman and she, she was married to a man a very long time and he, she didn't realize he had babies all over the place or anything like that. And when she looked deep in, into his background, she saw like he, he didn't like, he hated his mother, okay? Red flag, he hated his mother. So I, I told her, I said, he was not shown love. So now you've got to question that and say, well, does he know how to love or does he hate women? And it could be the same thing if you have a woman who hates her father or something along those lines. Does she hate men? Okay, so you look at, and I'm not saying that everybody that hates their parent turns out like that. So, you know, we're not talking in absolutes here. What What I'm talking about is, it gives you clue to why a person behaves the way they are because each individual is molded by their genetics and by their you know their be, their development their childhood development and their environment this is what makes a person so i always say when you look at somebody's track record it tells you who they are where have they been 
what were their relationships like in the past, okay? And now the narcissist is not going to tell you, but you have to, you know, you got to read between the lines and you've got to dive a little deep indirectly to get some information to really see what, where that narcissist was and, you know, what their track record was. Because if their track record sucks, their future track record is going to suck because their pattern of behavior is not going to change. This is who they are. And I was dealing with this woman and the gentleman that, that she had, he was in his sixties and she's like, well, when is he ever going to grow up? I said, he's never going to grow up. He's going to be like this till the day he dies. Okay. He's going to have a harem of women all over the place that he uses for whatever supply it is. And, you know, it's never going to stop until he can't do it anymore physically. And he settles for whoever's around. So, I mean, you got to accept them for who they are. You're not going to change them. All right. Now I'm moving on on the list. All right. Also, the other thing I wanted to bring up with red flags you may have missed is looking at how this person lives. When you meet somebody, all right, like when you meet somebody and you, you get in a relationship with them, look at how they were living before they met you and how you were living. Okay, like a lot of people, they get involved with somebody and they don't take that into account. Like maybe they were living off their family. Maybe they were living off a relative. Maybe they couldn't pay their bills. Maybe they were out every night of the week. This tells you what this person likes to do or their habits. Are they responsible? So now you're getting in a relationship with this person and you're not looking into their background. Again, the background is crucial. It's like when you go for a job, you guys, nobody's going to hire you unless they dive into your background and see who you are. That's how employers can tell who you are. That's why people run credit checks to see what is your history of paying. Do you have good credit? Okay. So it's the same thing when you get involved with somebody, do they have a healthy background of being in prior relationships or was it all toxic? Okay. Because if it was toxic with other people, it's going to be toxic with you. And when it, when they leave you or discard you or you discard them, when they move to the next relationship, guess what? It's going to be toxic with them as well, with the new supply. So, you know, never feel like the narcissist went off into the, you know, off into the sunset and is living happily ever after because whatever toxicities they showed with you, they're going to do the same thing with the new supply in time. Okay. So moving along. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up with red flags. Okay. That you may have missed with the covert narcissist is that you're not able to resolve conflict directly. In other words, let's say you have a problem with a covert narcissist. What are they going to do? They're not going to tell you what, what, what they're pissed off about. They're going to hold it inside. And here you are sitting at the table trying to talk to them. And you're trying to say, well, what's the problem? What's the problem? And what's that covert narcissist going to say? They're going to say, I honestly don't know what you're talking about. How do I know this? Because I've dealt with them in my family. I dealt with them with my ex. And they all, they're all the same. They're all the same. Every time I tried to resolve conflict with them, it was pure gaslighting. Honestly, I don't know what you're talking about. Or I don't have a problem, okay? I heard this from my mother-in-law. I heard this from my ex. I heard it from people in my family. They're all the same because they don't want to sit down and hash it out and, and, you know, resolve conflict. All right. Because they're afraid to take accountability. They're afraid you're going to call them out on the truth. They're afraid that they're going to have to face shame. So what do they do? They deny it and say, there's nothing wrong. And instead they try to pay you back by talking behind your back and smearing you behind your back or doing things like isolating you, you know, make you feel like the outsider. Anytime you feel these kind of feelings, guess what? You're dealing with a toxic person. If they're not straightforward, if they're not direct, if they can't sit down and talk about things, you're dealing with a toxic person. If they can't sit down, now listen and hear this again. If they cannot sit down and talk about things directly, you are dealing with a toxic person, okay? 
All right. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, don't realize that. And especially if you're a fair and just person, as long as you're not an attacking person and you're not attacking them and you're just simply trying to state what you have to say and how you feel. Okay. They see a red flag that you were with a covert narcissist is that they never validate your feelings. They always make you feel like you're the mental case. Oh, you're insecure. Oh, you take everything to heart. Why are you, why are you br still bringing up things from the past? You, instead, answer the fucking question instead of asking me why I keep bringing up the past. I'm bringing up the fucking past because you're not answering the question, all right? And I, I had a, a troll say something like, could you please stop using foul language? I'll, I'll use whatever language I want to use, okay? You're not going to be narcissistic and tell me how I'm supposed to speak. If you don't like the way I speak, then don't listen to the podcast, troll, all right? All right, the nerve of some people, I tell you, all right? If, if it's not your thing, see, I'm expressive and I'm passionate and I get into this because I, I want people to recognize these things so that they don't throw their lives away, okay? And, you know, if you can't appreciate that, then be on your way, troll, all right? And, and yet, they got the nerve to criticize, but yet they still listen, all right? They still listen because they know what I'm saying is the truth, but yet they want to criticize and tell me how to, how to do my job, all right? All right, you guys, I'm going to move along. I'm sorry. I just had to add that because I tell you, some people are, are just low lives. All right, now, moving on. The other thing that you may have missed with the covert narcissist is how they treat their kids. If they treat their kids badly or they abandon their kids, guess what? They're going to do the same thing to your kids, all right? Or they're going to do the same thing to you. So that shows you if they can't love their kids or does it give time to their children, you're dealing with a selfish person. Period, dot, end of story, Okay. If they are, are selfish that they don't give their time to their children and they abandon their children because they're selfish off doing what they want, they're going to do the same thing to you. So you guys, this is really important. Look at how they treat their children. All right. Next, the next big one, you guys, of red flags you may have missed with the covert narcissist is their body language. All right. The body language of the covert narcissist is of a stone, okay? You almost feel like they're gray rocking you. What a covert narcissist does is they show you no reaction and they cause reactive abuse by being like that because you're trying to get, you're sitting there trying to get some transparency out of this person and they are blatantly lying to you. They know they're lying to you. They're lying to you with a smirk on their face and you know they're playing mind games with you. And what is that going to do? That's going to trigger you and set you off where you explode, okay? They want you to explode so that they can either record you or tell everybody else you are a mental nut. Don't take the bait, okay? You're dealing with a trickster. You're dealing with somebody who's trying to mind fuck you. If they don't, if they don't, you know, if they don't acknowledge the truth and they keep lying to you, then you know what? You wave the flag. We're done here. We're done here. Never sit there and try to plea your case and expect transparency from the covert narcissist because you will never get it. You will never get closure from these people. They like to confuse you. They like to mind fuck you. So the way they mind fuck you is to confuse you and make you doubt yourself. That's why you got to know who the fuck you are. So that when they play these games with, with you, you walk out. You walk out and you don't deal with them, okay? You don't deal with them. And if you want to say anything, really, you don't owe them any explanation. But if you want to say anything, you could say, you know what? Play your games on somebody else. We're done. Okay. And you walk out. That's it. That's it. That's your way of letting them know you're not going to tolerate their nonsense. All right. Next on the list of red flags that you may have missed when you were in a relationship with that covert narcissist. Okay. They are, okay, they are critical and they are judging you 
but they do it in an indirect way, okay? Like they won't say, you know, they won't sit there and say, you're fat, okay? You know, that's more of an overt or grandiose narcissist. Instead, they may say something like, if they see a picture of you when you were thinner or something, they may say something like, oh my gosh, I, I wish I would have met you then, okay? Or if you're younger, they'll say something like, oh, oh, you look good here. I wish I would have met you then, okay? It's like an indirect dig, you know, making you feel like shit, but yet you can't say anything because in a way, you know, in a way that, that, you know, they're complimenting how you looked when you were younger, but still it's making you feel like shit because that's picture is from so long ago, all right? Or, you know, oh, that, that dress looks good, but it would look better if you lost 10 pounds or something like that. So now what that, what is that going to do? That's going to give you a complex. All right. So what do covert narcissists do? They give you a complex. These people are not in your corner. They are not your people. They're always going to make you feel like you are less than. They're going to be sarcastic so that if you say anything, they're going to say, I was only joking. Look how sensitive you are. Nobody could joke with you. Now I know why nobody likes you. See, that's triangulation. Now they're going to triangulate and bring other people and say, oh, nobody likes you, okay, to also invalidate you and make you feel like you're nothing. And the big one that they always bring up is they call you crazy, all right? So anybody calls you crazy, you delete and block them, all right? You delete and block them. But know this, when they're calling you crazy, that's because they are threatened by you. They're threatened by you because you're going to call them out for who they are. So now they've got to invalidate you and call you crazy and tell everybody else that you're crazy because you're a threat to exposing them for who they are, the toxic person that they are. So these are all red flags. Anybody calls you crazy, do not deal with them. They are not respecting you. That is blatant disrespect. And they're calling you crazy because you got them, all right? When somebody has to call you crazy, it means you got their back against the wall and that's all they can do to get out of it is to call you crazy. So recognize the intent behind it, all right, you guys? Now, let me see if I have anything else that I've missed on the list. And then this is the big one too, you guys. The big thing, the big way you're gonna know that you're dealing or red flag that you dealt with a covert narcissist is that you're constantly confused, all right? I mean, I was married over 13 years and, you know, it wasn't until I, I was educated on narcissism that I said, oh my God, this is, this is classic covert narcissism. But to, at the time when I was married, I kept saying to myself, what's the problem here? You know, what, we have a communication problem. What, what's the problem here? And even like my ex, you know, m covert narcissistic mother-in-law would say, oh, she says there's a communication problem. Well, yeah, that's right. There is a communication problem because you have conditioned your son to not be able to be transparent because he's a covert narcissist like you that has to hide himself and be passive aggressive and not be transparent, just like you, okay? Just like you, all right? So that's not somebody that you can get in a relationship with because they can't open themselves up and be vulnerable, all right, you guys? I know all this because I lived it and I was around toxic people that play mind games, okay? So that's why I'm trying to you know, educate people so that when you see any of these kinds of behaviors, you say to yourself, oh, toxic, toxic, okay? Can't communicate, won't validate me, ignores me. Another one, another big red flag that you guys may have missed is when you text the covert narcissist, what do they love to do? They love to not respond, okay? They love to not respond. Or if they do respond, they wait till days later and then they don't say anything. Like, there's no apology there. Like, oh, sorry, I didn't get back to you or anything, you know? No, I mean, once in a while, you may get an apology, but in general, that's their way of saying, 
I don't need to get back to you right away. You're not that important, all right? So that's a red flag with a covert narcissist is that they try to make you seem like you're unimportant. They're, they're the superior person. They are above you, okay? So they don't need to respect you and get back to you. So what is this? This is a red flag. When you're in a relationship with somebody, you have to respect the person that you're with. And what does that mean? That means calling and texting them back within a reasonable amount of time. If they're not doing that, that is blatant disrespect, okay? Great, unless something happened, but they'll tell you something happened. You have to dif differentiate, again, whether they're being authentic with you or they're giving you bullshit, okay? So you're always going to feel like, you know, you're begging for their attention. You're always got to be thirsty for these people, okay? Oh, okay, another, another red flag that I want to bring up, too, that you may have missed with the covert narcissist is that they're always nice to other people and they're cold to you. Okay. And I've dealt with this at a family party, a big party that I went to where the covert narcissist ignored, ignored us in the room, made like we weren't there and was nice to all the outsiders and strangers. And it was done deliberately. It was done deliberately to make us feel like we're nothing. And also to, you know, they wanted to flaunt their image that they were so, you know, they were so popular. They wanted to have that image that they're so popular and people like them. And, you know, you're, again, it's the your unimportantness, all right? So when people can't show you common courtesy or respect, that is a toxic red flag, recognize it, okay? Recognize it and don't make excuses for it and don't, you know, don't think it's nothing because it is something. And another red flag that you may have missed is that the covert narcissist, again, wants to sweep things under the rug or they'll say, let's just move on from here. Let's just move on from here. Sure, they want to move on because they don't want to be called out for and take accountability for anything. They don't want to face that shame. So they want you to forget every toxic, shitty thing that they ever did, all right? No, if... If you're, you know, if you're a true blue person, you got nothing wrong. You should have no problem with us discussing it. That shows me that you can't handle it, that you can't handle the fact that you're wrong, okay? And this is something that a covert narcissist can't do. They can't handle the fact that they're wrong. This is why they have to hide. They are the biggest cowards out there, cowards. They are cowards out there. They don't show their hand. They smile to your face. They stab you in the back. They can't be trusted, all right? They cannot be trusted. They try to they try to play you by pretending that they're in your corner, but when the chips are down, they'll abandon you and ghost you, okay? Um, I'm speaking from experience here because I know them like the back of my hand, all right? So when you see any of these red flags, you're dealing with a shady person and could be a narcissist, all right? These are the red flags that you may have missed when you were in the relationship. And another big red flag, you guys, big red flag, and I felt like this too when I was married, is that you're going to feel like your roommates, all right? And I had a client, same thing. She was dealing with a covert narcissist, and she said it was like he would ignore her and, and you know, was cold, unaffectionate, wasn't talking much. You're going to feel like that's your roommate, Okay. Your roommate, you're renting a, an apartment with somebody out of state. That's what it feels like. Because when you're in a relationship with a covert narcissist, you're going to feel alone. You are going to feel alone, okay? Why? Because they don't, there's no genuine, genuine or authenticity to these people, okay? They're not authentic. They're fake and phony, okay? I say it like it is because th this is what it is, people. They are fake and phony and any kind of kindness or genuineness that they may show you is either because they feel like showing it to you at that time, maybe they feel like being nice, or they're being phony, okay? Or they're being phony, they're trying to portray that they're nice. And they sometimes do that too to draw you back in because they see you pulling away. 
So when they see you pull it away, all of a sudden they're going to be real nice to you. But then once they know they got you, then, then you get that cold drift or you're going to get that cold drift if they're busy with another supply that they're focused on. But of course they don't tell you, okay? They're not going to tell you what they're doing because they want their cake and eat it too. So you got to pick up, you guys. When you deal with the covert narcissist and red flags that you may have missed, you've got to look at the nonverbal Red, go li- listen to my podcast on you know the nonverbal body language of the covert narcissist because I'm telling you, if you could read body language, you'll be able to read a covert narcissist. They're not hard to figure out. The, as long as you're educated on this, you'll be able to spot them all over the place. And somebody said, oh, well, you know, the experts say narcissism is, you know, one to 5%. It's a lot more than one to 5%, okay? One to five that may have gotten a diagnosis that went for diagnosis, but we know that narcissists will never want to go for a diagnosis because they don't want to think anything's wrong with them. If a narcissist goes for a diagnosis, it's because their partner made them. If a narcissist goes to therapy, it's because their partner made them, all right? Or they were going to lose their marriage or relationship, so they were forced into therapy. Therapy, all right, but the narcissist is going to manipulate the therapist because they think they're smarter than everybody, and they're going to play the victim, and they're going to be laughing behind the therapist's back and behind your back because they're going to try to mind fuck the both of you, all right? Because they won't acknowledge that anything's wrong with them, and they're going to be laughing and thinking that you think yet you're changing them. Okay, that that's the truth. That's the truth. So you guys, I'm getting off tangent here. All right, so these are all like the red flags that you got to be aware of that you may have missed with the covert narcissist. I'm going on my list. Oh, another one, you guys, that you may have missed is that their constant need for attention, all right? They want admiration and attention. So what do they do? They're ass kissers, okay? Covert narcissists are ass kissers. So they'll be real, real nice to people that they don't really know that well because they're trying, they, they want to portray that image that they're a nice person. And they also want to make you look like the bad guy. That's what they do. They, they, by, by killing people with kindness and flattery, they're manipulating them, these outsiders, So that everybody thinks, oh, they're so nice. Oh, they're so nice. Meanwhile, they don't know them. They don't live with them. And meanwhile, it makes you look like you're the bad guy. So it's all manipulation, you guys. Um, Another thing uh, that they love to do, all right, is triangulate you with your ex. So another red flag you may have missed is that they kept bringing up their ex. They may have compared you to to their ex. They may have said something like, well, even Cindy never did this. I, you're, you know, you're like a, a police officer trying to control me. Even my ex didn't do that. That is triangulation. Recognize it. They're trying to make you feel like you're inferior. They're bringing up, you know, their exes to make you feel inferior. Like, well, even my ex didn't do that. Or, you know, even your mother thinks you're crazy. This is a w- another way to invalidate you and make you feel like you're nothing, all right? Um, so the big thing, like I said, you guys, is it, red flags that you may have missed, the disappearing, the ghosting, the invalidation, the not being able to resolve conflict directly, you know, the uh, little side jabs and sarcastic remarks. All of these are red flags that you may have missed with the covert narcissist. And the big one, big one is the confusion. If you were in this relationship and you felt alone and you felt confused, nine times out of 10, you were probably dealing with a covert narcissist and you miss the red flags, you guys. You miss the red flags. And when they when they have the other supply and it's a romantic relationship, if, if, if all of a sudden you're in a relationship, like I saw this reel with this woman where she said she was a young girl and she was married to this guy for a year and she does a reel about like, you know, how she they had all these birthday parties and like she didn't realize her husband was having an affair on her for a year and she was blindsided. Well, there had to be red flags there, had to be, okay? Because if he was running hot 
with the mistress that he had, he'd be running cold with you. And that is a red flag. But see, she probably didn't pick up on it or he made excuses and said, oh, he's tired or this or that. Or when he disappeared, he gave her an excuse and she didn't realize that is a red flag. He's out with the other supply. So that's how you pin it down, you guys, right? You got to look you know, deeper into something and you'll see that it's not always what the narcissist is telling you or not telling you. And that's how you're going to be able to spot these red flags. So I hope this helps you. If it does, please hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram the game exp 123 okay and have a great day mm-hmm.